Protons were the first dose escalation technique that were successfully employed for chordomas. And that experience started in the late 1980s, early uh, 1990s, and was successful in improving the local control of skull base and spine chordomas because of the ability to dose escalate. Protons travel a certain distance in tissue and then stop. They give 50 to 60 percent less uh, radiation dose to the adjacent normal tissue. So the total body radiation dose from protons is roughly half of what it is with conventional x-rays. Protons as such became one of the preferred treatment modalities for treatment of chordomas. In the interim, the uh, photon or x-ray technologies improved with time to the development of a number of focused x-ray technologies. And these include intensity modulated radiation therapy, uh, stereotactic uh, radiation therapy, uh, gamma knife, which just refers to focused radiation using cobalt sources uh, in a specially designed machine that are focused at the tumor. Uh, the cyber knife, which is uh, similar uh, to the gamma knife, except it uses a rotating uh, linear accelerator and uh, image guidance. Uh, image guidance uh, refers to uh, high <clears throat> uh, technology imaging in the room to see exactly where the tumor is and to align the tumor with the treatment beams. So currently with image guided intensity modulated radiation therapy or stereotactic radiation therapy, one can deliver high doses to the tumor. Uh, there are no randomized studies available comparing protons, for example, uh, with these high technology uh, x-ray uh, modalities. Uh, there are, however, studies currently ongoing for some of the more common tumors, breast cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancer, comparing protons uh, with, uh, with x-rays. The reason for using proton therapy in chordomas is either whether it is in the skull base the spinal column or the sacrum uh, is because protons have a finite range in tissue and most often these chordomas arise very close to critical structures like the brain stem, the optic chiasm in the skull base, then the cervical spine we have the spinal cord, in the thoracic, in the lumbar spine you come across the spinal cord as well as the kidneys and the bowel and in the, and in the sacrum we have uh, the bowel loops. So because of this, we tend to use protons. Several things are clear. With the reduction in the total body radiation dose, there are selected patients who we feel very strongly about that they should be receiving protons. The first would be young patients, and young, I mean, pediatric patients, but even young patients below 30, for example. Uh, one of the consequences of radiation therapy to normal tissue is a radiation-associated second malignancy. It's an uncommon event but the longer that you're going to live, so if you're a young person and you might uh, be living another 70 or 80 years, uh, you're at risk for a very long time. And the risk for radiation-associated malignancy goes up over time. As a practicing uh, physician for the last 10 to 11 years in protons, and I have access to other forms of radiation, but I personally uh, use proton therapy and most recently the active pencil beam scanning treatment method. I think whether one is treated with stereotactic radiation or protons, the most important factor from my perspective is uh, being treated by an expert who is familiar with chordoma, who has treated a number of patients with chordoma, who works carefully with the uh, referring physicians and uh, hopefully is also involved with the Chordoma Foundation in trying to advance the treatment uh, for this disease.